What is going on? Welcome back to another Raw review for Old School Monday Night Raws. This is the June 27th, 1994 edition. So we're going to get right into it. Like always, the start of Raw, we see what happened last week with Lawler and Duke the Dumpster. Duke says that if the WWF won't do anything about it, he will. Jerry says that the officials made him a pilot, but he can't say it. Instead, he says that he'll pay a fine or take a suspension for what he did. But there's a guy off camera and forces him to apologize, and he eventually does. They played this off as a horrible attack, maybe at the time, but with 2021 eyes, it's just a regular day at the office for me, getting beat up with a trash can. So this is for any superstars who think about doing anything like this. They just have to be ready to apologize, and they'll be able to get away with it. Such a soft punishment for how they sold the attack. I mean, not even a match between the two. I don't know. It's ridiculous. The first match of the show is Mabel versus Bam Bam Bigelow. Mabel hits a big boot and a leg drop to the back of the head, but then gets distracted by Luna, so he goes for an elbow drop and Bigelow moves out of the way. Luna stays on the apron, and when Mabel gets Irish whipped, he sends her flying off. Mabel hits a body slam, and then Bigelow body blocks Mabel. Oscar, the manager for Mabel, checks on Luna, but Bigelow shoves him out of the way, and Mabel gives the double axe hammer to the back of Bigelow, and that also knocks out Luna. They trade punches, and Mabel slides back in the ring just in time and wins by countout. Usually, I don't like Countout, but it kept this match short, so whatever. Get Mabel out of there. Bam Bam pissed off after the match, and Luna tries to console him. Meanwhile, Ted DiBiase makes his way to the ring. He talks to both of them, so he's going after another guy to join him. Then we see from two weeks ago on a Superstar taping, where DiBiase introduced some guy he said was The Undertaker. They show him, but it didn't look like him. I know what you're thinking, but let's just save it to when it actually becomes obvious. Undertaker also comes out for a match with DiBiase, so for right now... At least according to commentary, The Undertaker is working for DiBiase. Next up, IRS comes out cutting a promo about taxes or something. The audio wasn't clear. He is taking on Rich Myers, the jobber extraordinaire, but he falls to IRS after getting stretched out for the submission. Pause on that. The King's Court up next, with the guest being Jim Neidhart. Lawler has the boss to say that Neidhart was the leader of the Hart Foundation, saying that Brett was the loser of the two from that team. Neidhart says that he was the Hart Foundation and that Brett wasn't grateful. He has helped him out when Brett called him, but still, he never got a thank you. He tells us why he did what he did at King of the Ring. He made sure that Brett retained the belt so that Owen Hart could get his title shot. So out comes Owen wearing the King costume. He says that he finally got the respect and proclaims himself the King of Hearts. Gorilla Monsoon, though, tough to listen to. He's butting in after, like, every line that Owen says. Like, he says that he beat and humiliated Bret Hart at WrestleMania 10. And right away, Monsoon says that he was lying and that he got lucky. Shut up. Like, what do you mean that he's lying? He did beat Bret Hart. And because he's beaten Bret before, he now that he has even more confidence because winning the King of the Ring, he wants another title shot. Owen makes a promise to Lawler that he will bring the WWF Championship with him next time. We have about a month and a half until SummerSlam, with about six Raws left, so, so it'll be interesting how they stretch and play this out until then. I am familiar with the storyline, but I'm not familiar how they get from now all the way to SummerSlam, so... All of this is going to be new content for me. Then we have a tag team match where the tag champions head shrinkers are taking on jobbers. Maybe because they are faces, but it feels like they haven't done anything since winning the belts. The Quebecers as champions seem like they were on TV more. While I didn't really pay attention to most of their matches, at least their presence was always on the shows. Now with the head shrinkers as champions, I rarely see anything with tag teams going on. So they get the win with the splash and we move on. Backstage, the cameraman sneaks into the locker room and Ted DiBiase along with Nikolai Volkov having a conversation with Bam Bam Bigelow and Luna Vachon, but we don't hear much before DiBiase throws the cameraman out. The next match, Quang gets a win over a jobber and the crowd, unless it's pumped in, gave a decent pop for the finish, so good for Quang, I guess, getting that reaction. Before we move on, I forgot to mention, if anyone cares, the start of the new generation promotional stuff started at the King of the Ring. They are playing a new commercial that shows old versus new, where everything sucked back then, but is great now. The four superstars they used to show old was Andre, the Iron Sheik, some guy I don't really recognize but looks familiar, and Hogan. And the new superstars are Jeff Jarrett, Diesel, Razor Ramon, which okay, I see what they're getting at, but then they show Roddy Piper as part of the new generation, which he's been here since like the 70s, so I don't know why they added him as part of the new generation in that commercial. But enough of the ads, we see enough of them already. Lex Luger comes out for a squash match. Actually, you know what? Can we go back to talking about commercials instead? Nah, but anyways, he gets the win with the torture rack, then he posts for like 3 minutes. Talk about making it known who they want on top. 
Macho Man and Gorilla Monsoon close out the show, and before it ends, Ted DiBiase tells us that he's acquired the services of Bigelow, and that Lex Luger will be next. But that ends the show, let's get to the awards. For the best moment, I'm going to give it to the whole DiBiase stable stuff. He didn't stop at just Nikolai Volkov, now he has who we believe is The Undertaker. And they had the show following him, and actually, eventually, adding Bigelow, and I guess Luna Vachon to his group. So that was the best moment. For the worst moment, I had Jerry Lawler only having to apologize for committing such a brutal attack on Duke the Dumpster. For the wackiest performer, I had Quang. This man is just like Adam Bomb from last year. No current feud, just beating jobbers for no reason every week. Same manager and everything. For the stand-up performer, I had Owen Hart on the mic. While beforehand it wasn't as bad as most King's Course have been, Owen Hart made it an even better segment. And now we started the road to the rematch between the two brothers. And now for the WWF title... This episode has a couple of things to go back and watch, but I wouldn't say that it's must-watch, so I'm going to give it a bad grade. If they took away one of the jobber matches and maybe extended one of the other segments, it would probably always get at least a good grade, but there are just too many meaningless matches to go back and watch an entire episode for. So this one, while I gave it a bad grade, I'd still say skim through it, especially to watch the stuff with Owen Hart and the whole Ted DiBiase stable building storyline. Alright, and with that being said, I just got to throw this out there just because... I don't really do it as much, so I'm just going to be doing it here. If you have any ideas for awards, leave them down in the comments. If you have any comments, questions about the shows, about the reviews, also leave them down in the comments. I'll try to get to them, maybe on an actual video, I'll answer them there. Or just in the comments down below, we'll start a conversation. And also, if you do not know, I have a playlist for all of these reviews and, and some other episodes that I had recorded before I started doing the reviews, but they kind of makes sense so i put them in a review playlist it should be down in the description or at the end of the video so in one of the little thumbnails so go ahead and click on that stuff subscribe like comment do all that good stuff i don't really mention it like i said so i thought hey i'll do it right here right now so with all that being said until the next review or until the next video i am out